Okay, crew, this is uh, this is really special because we often sit down with elite coaches and um, people of that sort of ilk, but today we get to sit, sit down with one of Skillist's absolute power users, Andrew McDonald. And Andrew has been on the app for a couple of years, I think, now. Um, and I think on the app, the average handicap something around about 12 or something like that. So it's actually pretty low. But Andrew's even lower than that. He's like one of the best amateur players uh, in America, you could say, and has found incredible value working with Alex Riggs that you can also see on screen at the moment. But Andrew, first of all, just thank you so much for being an amazing patron and user of the platform. But um, can we just dive into your story and like who you are as a person potentially, where you work, which is an incredible company, and then your golfing story from there? Definitely. Well, first, I have to uh, correct you. I still have some work to do to be one of the best amateurs in the country, but but we're getting there. We're getting, Alex has me on the on the right track. Um, no, I appreciate it. Uh, you know, my my golfing life is interesting. Um, so currently I work for Apple. Uh, I'm in technical operations for them, get to work on a bunch of new product launches within our Mac uh, product department. It's been incredible. Um, so I obviously do. Uh, golf is not my way of making money. I have other things, um, although golf is my passion. And, and I started in the game, I was 12 years old. We, my family, we moved from uh, Atlanta, Georgia, down to Orlando, and we had the opportunity to, to join at Bay Hill, um, Arnold Palmer's golf course there in Orlando. It was just an incredible place. You know, being around a guy with that kind of uh, presence inside the game of golf was incredible. Uh, I got to play growing up with uh, Arnold's grandson, Sam Saunders. And so you know, he took my five bucks about every time we played nine holes of golf, but uh, always motivated me to improve. And yeah, I, I had the passion always. I was at the golf course every single day and I wanted to play college golf. I wanted to play golf as, as a living. Um, I probably got to the point where right when you need to really be peaking, uh, you know, that junior, senior year of high school, I probably wasn't shooting the scores that I needed to, to be able to play at, at the kind of colleges I wanted to. And Somehow I got a piece of advice from, uh, from my dad and other people in my life that said, Hey, listen, golf doesn't go anywhere. Um, you know, go, go get a good degree and, you know, work your butt off and, and golf might be there. And so that thought never left my brain. Right. I, I didn't play a bunch of golf over my college years. Um, I was at university of Florida the same time that, you know, Billy Horschel and Camila Villegas and a bunch of studs were there. Um, and I got to watch them and see them and I played with them in high school golf. But I didn't really touch clubs over that time and got back into the you know work world, uh, working for Lockheed Martin, making missiles and fire control radars and a bunch of really cool stuff. Um, and I picked the clubs back off and I kind of started playing. And luckily, I, I still had the ability to get the ball in the hole. I was you know probably around a scratch still when I got back into it. And that's when I started finding my love for, you know, playing some of these amateur tournaments. And it's amazing how much is still out there, which is really exciting for, you know, people like me who've, who've gotten older now and we still want to play. So, you know, the, the mid amateur tournaments, the amateur tournaments, um, there's a lot of activity you can have and you still get to test yourself against a bunch of these college and high school studs um, who are playing at really elite levels. And kind of fast forward to now, you know, I, I played a bunch of that probably the last 10 years I've, try to push myself into playing more of these, but I, I always ran into the problem that I had a couple big misses per round. I, I had a, a little bit of a homegrown swing. I had a couple instructors back in the high school time and, and they, they taught me some things, but I, I'll be honest, maybe I was too young to, to, or not mature enough to fully appreciate what they were telling me, but I never understood what they were saying. They would bump my hips left. They would tell me something and it would work for like a day or two. And then I'd lose it, you know, and I never understood it. Um, so I always kind of felt like instructors and me, not that we didn't get along, but I just never understood it. And I had my own feel for the game. Um, but I wanted to get better and I wanted to stop, you know, hitting that one or two blocks into the trees that cost me two to four shots in these competitive rounds. And so a buddy of mine had sent some videos to somebody, I think it was outside of Skillist and he had gotten, you know, five or 10 minute, like video analysis. And I thought it was pretty interesting. It kind of motivated me to go, well, I wonder if, you know, if something like that could help me. And that's actually where I found Alex on Instagram. Um, really liked his style, you know, the way he talked through the, the game, the way he described things. And 
you know, heard about Skillist, jumped in. I bought the individual one-time lesson, not really knowing what to expect. And um, the first analysis, I mean, you know, Kyle Hebner, my buddy, who's also on Skillist, one of the like five people or six people that I've recruited into Skillist because I love it so much. Um, you know, he, uh, he and I just nerd out over the same thing. It was like, you know, an eight minute analysis that somehow was the first golf instruction that I had ever received that actually like made sense to me. And like, I could actually connect with and go, Oh, I get that. Okay. And then I was on the range the next day doing something. And I think I hit Alex with like five different comeback videos on that first lesson. And then I immediately signed up for the subscription. I'm like, I, this is incredible. Uh, and that was like you said, that was like a year and a half ago. Um, yeah. And the journey since then has been so cool because I mean, we can go into this, but you can change so many things, but just changing things without a knowledge of what you're doing. I mean, it's a, it's, it's craziness, right? But that's, what's been great is this entire journey. You know, I'm, I know why we're doing it. <laughs> I know what we're trying to strive for. Um, so he's setting me up for success when I go on the range and I actually have something that I know that I'm focusing on. I'm not just hitting golf balls just to hit them. Mm. I, I actually have a purpose, which is something I, you know, I may have spent a lot of time at the range in my life, but I didn't always have a purpose. Totally. And I think, um, yeah, I mean, that's half the, re um, it's the reason we built this thing, you know, we're trying to solve it. You know, I've been teaching for 20 years, believe it or not. I know I look incredibly young, but you know, um, <laughs> been teaching for 20 years and these problems have just been there forever. Like you're watching people walk out the door when you teach them in person, like that guy's got no chance. Like you could have fixed him so well. And like, he's flushing it and you're like, all right, he's got, He'll hold on to that for like the next 10 hours, maybe if he goes and hits some balls. And it's just always been a problem. One of the other problems that you said uh, you isolated is that you never sort of could click with a coach or you didn't understand quite what they were saying. Most students think it's them. You know, they think, mm. oh, I just don't get this coaching thing. I don't know what the heck people are talking about, but you just haven't found the right mentor for you or the right person that, it, mm. or the person that articulates things that you need to hear them or the way you need to hear them. So, yeah, and traditionally, if you want to find that person, you've got to get in a car and you drive around or you get onto a plane. And so, yeah, I mean, um, this is a great thing about social media to begin with, right, is that there's all this content out there and you can consume it and go, that person makes sense to me. And now, obviously, with skill, yeah. you can actually start interacting with that person, which is great. So, Alex, what did you think when this guy came along and he was already playing <laughs> off plus one or scratch? And he was like just bombarding you with things straight away. Is that you, <laughs> you must have been like, wow, this guy is intense, or like this is my kind of student. What was your initial reaction? Yeah, it, it was it was a really exciting thing to come through because you know Andrew initially came in at I forget if you were a plus one at that point, but you're obviously playing off a very good level. But there were noticeable things in your movement that could have been cleaned up. And I know from a coach's perspective, that's always super exciting to us because that tells us he knows how to play the game. Okay, he's got he's got probably a pretty good short game. He's you know how to get the golf ball in the hole. And as soon as we tidy up these movements, I mean, now it's his opportunity to shine. Yeah, totally. Um, so what we might do? Do you want to just get this action up and have a really quick look at it? This will be let's this do will it. Blow, this will blow everyone away because actually, even before we do that, um, Andrew, because most people will be like playing off plus one like what what is there that you could possibly do like surely there's not much you need to do with your action but what did you want i think you said like you always had a flair right did you mm. is that the thing that always killed you yep. like you know what did you really want out of this like because your handicap has dropped like to plus two or plus three or something like that but like yep. it's actually done something um bigger than that hasn't it for you uh, absolutely yeah i mean what i wanted was you know to, and you're never going to be perfect, but I wanted to eliminate those huge misses mm. that would cause you to, to take the two off the tee and then be kind of white knuckling at the rest of the round, especially in competition, right? It, was, it wasn't really impacting me as much in recreational play, but you go in a tournament and then you really can't play when you're in the trees all day. Um, and so mm -hmm. I, I wanted to fix that. And Alex had all the education and, and all the knowledge to, to how to do that. I didn't know how to. I just knew I wanted to stop blocking the ball. Mm -hmm. um you know once or twice and what i thought was really neat was as we started to change things and started to build things up what i've actually found is my recreational play hasn't changed drastically but what happens under competitive pressure um what shows up when i don't have my a game that's what's different right it's you just continue to take what i consider to be a bad swing a poor swing and it just keeps getting a little bit better um and it's like alex said i've always relied on my short game so 
what's nice is we have a little bit of the luxury of kind of going in and really overhauling things. And, and I feel good because I still know that even if it doesn't feel perfect, I, I have that short game to fall back on. Mm. Gives me a little bit more freedom to go make these changes and, and commit to them. So just in closing, guys, so I wanted to ask you, what does it look like, the interaction between the two of you? Like we heard, you know, you said at the start, Andrew, that you just bombarded him with like a million videos. But how often would you be interacting on, you know, the platform like messaging or like sending stuff? Like, what does that look like? Is it like every couple of days that there's a little question or at least, or what would it be? Yeah, it's a good question. I think it definitely depends on kind of where we are in terms of, are we trying to add something really new or are we going into like a tournament in a week? Um, we're trying to add something new. He'll tell you, I haven't stopped bombarding him. He'll, he'll get videos from me, you know, <laughs> maybe every couple of days, uh, depending on, but it's funny because people ask me that same thing. And I, I always try, there's sometimes I might be asking him a question and that might just be a picture or a message, but I, I always feel like, if I've made progress, real progress towards what we just talked about, he's great at giving me little incremental things, then it's worth an update. If it's not, then I, mm. then I, I'm still working towards that initial goal. And, and if we're making quick progress, then I'm just going to keep feeding him. But yeah. if we're not, then I know what to do and I know how to work on that. And we get, so it's, it's a lot more frequent in those sessions. We get towards the tournament and it's funny. I, I think people would think differently. They might think I need to check in with them all the time. And it's actually a little bit different in those situations. We've talked about, what I need to do. So it's not that I don't need his help, but we, I know very clearly what we have to do because we've already drawn it out. Like there's a good two week period where I need to start shifting my focus away from those crazy exaggerated things away from some of the technical. Um, so actually there's a lot less discussion and video banter, more just kind of message back and forth leading up to events. But I think that's what's so great about the platform is I don't feel because of the way it's set up. I don't feel the pressure of, okay, we need to set something up once a month or once a week. Like it's, it's variable. It depends on, you know, where we are in the process. Amazing. Amazing. I mean, mate, it's just been an absolute pleasure having you on board. And I think you're, um, yeah, just a great example of what's possible. And I think the cool thing I love about the platform is that like you could probably look at someone like you and go, oh, it's only for really good players. But like we've seen, you know, 28 handicappers come down to 12 on it sort of thing. So it's just, it's right for everyone. But um, boys, Alex, is there anything you want to say in closing at all? No, I think that this is just like a really good learning opportunity for a lot of people just to see the best and most sort of functional use of this platform. And I, I think that especially like Andrew kind of taking things on and be, being a, a really organized person who's, who's self-motivated and willing to put in the time mm-hmm. that this is just all about having feedback and then being able to grind. And what's, what's so different from the normal in-person lesson structure is that instead of knowing you've got that Saturday lesson every week and, and knowing that, wow, well, I didn't really practice this week, but I'm going to see my coach on Saturday. Mm-hmm. you don't really send stuff through, like you said, unless you feel that you've made progress. So there's this accountability that you then naturally possess. And it's like, mm-hmm. I got to grind. I, I got to grind. I got to show my coach that I've actually made some progress. Otherwise, there's no point in sending something through. Mm-hmm. Totally, totally, mate. Uh, couldn't agree more. So look, boys, thank you so much for being here. Um, let's check in again. Like, let's, you know, in six months time, once you've won all these events this summer, Andrew, we can uh, we can check back in again. But once again, it's been an absolute privilege to have both of you on the platform. And um, yeah, let's do this again soon. Awesome. That'd be great. Thanks, guys.